This is a clip of Silent Hunter 3. It's a sub simulation game based back in World War II on a German sub. I'm currently running it with a mod called Grey Wolves Expansion, which is available on subsim.com as well as a few other sites. I'll link it in the description. The game's available for $10. I'll link that in the description as well. And I'll just let this play out. It's a convoy attack that I did. I haven't played this well over a year, but I put probably over 200 hours into it a year or so ago. So we'll see how it goes. One of the big challenges is plotting the enemy's course because they don't even leave a position on the map if you haven't set for realism. Although that's fully adjustable. You can have it with map updates and everything, but I don't like it. It gets too arcadey. That thing along the bottom is how you tell. If you can plot lines and get a general idea of how they're crossing them, you can enter the data into there and figure it out from the time over the distance and it'll fill in the blank basically. There's numerous tutorials on that. One of the biggest ways to detect any ship or any sound that you can detect around you is by using the hydrophone which is basically an underwater sensor designed to detect noises and you'll see quite a lot of use here and I'll even be standing by it quite a lot as to get an idea in real time what's going on around me here you see the attack periscope it's got the TDC on the side of it which gives me basic functionality over the torpedo guidance which is pretty primitive back in the 40s and you got a glimpse of the ships there now I have to try to determine which ship it is so I know how large its mass or its mast is and from that I can determine how far away it is from the hash marks above the reticle which you'll see in a moment here and I can start punching in a proper torpedo solution. Contact merchants closing. Bearing three three zero. Medium range. Contact merchants constant distance. Bearing three three nine. Medium range. By this point I have an idea of what kind of ship it is and I'm starting to enter the solution. Here is where I make a fault though. As I get everything punched in, that blue button that I pressed to go into set mode, I forget to press again and it screws with the solution at a later point which I have to correct. The controls up there that I'm currently going over is salvo control, but I don't realize that until later to go into salvo mode, it's that TS switch to the right of the fire button. So I go in anyway, that's the sound of me opening up a tube, and this is when I notice the fault. As I switch out, it resets the angle of bow. And since it's programmed with an error, it just keeps resetting it back. So I have to quickly go into point mode, which basically just bore sights the torpedo. And you'll see the results. And I also do figure out how to go into salvo mode and fire the rest of the tubes.
Those last two dials that I was altering. The first one, three position switch, is torpedo speed. To the left of it is impact or magnetic fusing. Magnetic fusing back in this early stage of the war was terrible, so you used impact only. And to the very right, that dial is uh, torpedo running depth. That cargo ship has a keel probably of about 11 meters. But if I put it to about three, it'll hit it right at the waterline. Here's the results. I'll do a full tutorial on the full TDC. This is just the uh, segment that's attached to the uh, attack periscope. Earlier you saw me flip through it when I was trying to get my controls set up. You could pause on yes, that sir. to get a Current better idea of what's on it. But I will do a full tutorial on how to use it. Here you get to see a selection of the various dials and controls available here. On the left you got uh, depth up to 25 meters, on the right up to crush depth, on the very top right compressed air, top left is your RPM for both engines, and the two dials on the bottom, on the left is dive planes and on the right is uh, your rudder. Here you get to see how you figure out the depth underneath your boat. Because you need to know that so you don't slam into the bottom while trying to avoid depth charging. Rudder zero degrees. Current depth two zero. Once an enemy has detected you, they'll start pinging you with their sonar, and from there, if they can get a good tone on you, they'll come in and do a depth charging run on you, and just keep doing a figure eight around you, dumping as much as they can. Warship bearing eight four constant distance. As I'm starting to try to wonder where this warship is, I'm going to head over to the hydrophone yes, sir. and warship, you'll get to see how that works. for silent running because I probably should have did that long before I even started the run but being out of practice so you do what you do Now I'm starting to make my way down to the hydrophone area. Here you get to see the operator working it for me. You can take control and listen for yourself, and you can actually tell if it's a merchant ship or a warship just by the sound of the screws. But here I'm just trying to get a bearing on where it's coming in on me, because I know it's going to be coming on a straight course at me, and from the look of it it's coming bearing 90 degrees.
Everybody has a different way of dealing with this. I like to slowly wait for them to come at me from a hard right like this or a hard left and then corkscrew my way into them while diving. Once you get behind them, you can crank the screws and they can't hear you because they're you're in their baffles. And the explosions also mask that. Anything beneath them, they probably won't be able to hear it. Here you get to see the armaments. It has four forward tubes, and that one's partially loaded, and it's still got eight minutes to go. Just think of that for all four front tubes, and you have to remain level to load them. In a moment, you'll get to hear a depth charge go off, followed by some cannon fire for whatever reason. I still don't know why they're firing a cannon, but just listen. At this point, I'm kind of wondering what the fuck just happened above me. Because I hear ships breaking up, I heard shots, I heard explosions. So I'm panicking to get down, and right now I'm trying to figure out exactly how far down I can go. The thing to remember about depth charges is, uh, it's okay if they go off above you. You don't want them to hit you, but if it does hit like a conning tower or something above you, it's a lot better than if it hits below you. Because the thing about pressure and water is, if something explodes underneath you, it's going to want to release that pressure and it's going to want to do it above you. And it could split your boat in half. This is also why magnetic torpedoes, if you insert them about half a meter below the draft of an enemy ship, can split even the biggest warship or cargo ship straight in two with one shot. That's pretty much it for the video though. The, de the destroyer makes a couple more runs at me, uh, I'll let one or two of them play out. But for the next 25 minutes I just sat here avoiding depth charging until I got away. 
It usually takes hours though, so I probably got lucky here. This here is the crew management system. Uh, Type 7B holds about 50, 54 crew. They all get tired, so you have to rotate them out. That's pretty much it. They never even came close to me with the charges. It's possible in some later dates I'll post the campaign or something. I've done quite a few campaign runs. Never made it uh, further than 1940. But we'll see how it goes. <laughs> 